finally, I have finally put together my list for the best metal albums of 2011. It is January 5th, and I finally have decided what I want to put on here and what I want to leave out. Now, this year was fantastic in metal releases, even though there were a few slight disappointments with some of the bigger name bands. A lot of the bands that don't get the spotlight really shined this year. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with my number 10 here, and that is Dualism by Textures. Now, Textures is considered one of the fathers of, I guess, the gent movement, which I really don't like using that term because I don't like genreizing stuff, but it's a really great album. It's, it's Sonically, it's very... It's very melodic, but at the same time, there's some very pummeling grooves along with uh, clean vocals with their newer vocalist. And all in all, it's just a really accessible, versatile album. And I think that gets a nod for you know my number ten spot because you know I've listened to this thing for hours. It's fantastic, and I could keep going back to it. Now number nine will be the sum of all fossils by the band Flourishing. Now Flourishing is a really hard band to describe. I don't want to say they're a doom type band, but in a sense their vocalists and the way their guitars are down tuned and their the way they use distortion and um, just the way they're how muddy they are. It sounds almost like a doom metal band, but it's not the pace of doom metal. This is very fast paced, upbeat stuff with the doom metal vocals and guitars and drums, which I don't really, really know what to characterize it at, but it kind of has some black metal elements too. All in all, this record is completely pummeling and relentless. Like, there is not really one place where I remember peace being in it. Now, number eight, this, this number eight spot kind of is there just because I'm a huge fanboy of it, but this goes to The Human Romance by Darkest Hour. Now, they're one of the bands that really got me in the metal, so that's, like I said, I'm kind of biased because I'm a fanboy of them. But it's much better than Eternal Re Return, which was their last record. John Henry's vocals are awesome on this. His lyrics are awesome. Uh, the duo guitars with Mike Shabum and uh, Mike Kerrigan are fantastic, very melodic, and there's really cool acoustic songs. And all in all, it's just a fantastic record by them this year. I'm really glad that it's a return to form for them because I wasn't really let down by their last record, but this one's just so much better. Now number six is The Hunter by Mastodon. Lots of people were kind of questioning this album because it sounds more upbeat and poppy than like stuff off Leviathan and Remission because it's it's more accessible. I mean I even heard two of their songs on the radio. It kind of reminds me of a old, like a later 1970s prog rock metal band or something like that. And I love this record to death. But I'm gonna be honest, I hope with their next record they kind of go back to their older sounding stuff because it's Mastodon, but it doesn't really sound like Mastodon, if you get what I'm saying. Even though it's such a fantastic record, I kind of I kind of want them to go back to their true form. I mean, it's kind of like the same deal with the new Opeth record where it didn't sound like Opeth at all. It sounded like, you know, some weird 1970s prog rock stuff. But hopefully for both those bands, they'll go back to their form next record. Now, number... Five, I have Gigan. Now this is a mouthful. Gigan, quasi hallucinogenic Holios, sonic landscapes. Now this is a very tech death type progressive metal album, which has an awesome album cover, by the way. And once again, it's a very relentless um, melodic death metal that's just ridiculous and atmospheric and it's just another fantastic death metal release this year which we've had quite a few of number four omnivium by obscura once again another tech death masterpiece by obscura they're one of my favorite bands i've been looking after for the last couple years you know german tech deathers uh has uh christian i forget what his last name is but he's the guy that was in uh necrophages with muhammad susmez a couple years ago but now this is his other band, and it's fantastic. It's awesome, awesome album. Lots of lyrical content about like space and physics and stuff like that. Awesome shredding, uh, really cool, unique riffs. Fantastic album. Number three, I have Outer Isolation by Vector. Now this is more of a prog thrash band, which I just recently discovered not too long ago. I'm going back and listening to the rest of your discography as we speak. But man, their vocalist is awesome. He could freaking shriek like nobody. 
and just the guitar work itself they're, they're very thrashy type riffs but they kind of have a prog spin on it the way the guitar tone set up the way their their patterns and their arrangements are put together it's very it's strange but it's very cool because i've never seen a thrash metal band with like very spacey ethereal type elements in their music now my number two is the discovery by born of osiris and i'm probably going to get a lot of crap for this because lots of people still consider them like a, I guess, deathcore, metalcore band, whatever you want to call it. But this album was such a surprise for me because I've always liked Born of Osiris, believe it or not. Even though I'm, I'm mostly like a big death metal guy, I've always enjoyed Born of Osiris because I like their keyboards and stuff like that. But this album just took them from here to like up here. It's It's so good. Like... Their electronic elements that are fantastic. I don't know what their keyboard electronic guy name is, but he's he's awesome. Their guitarists trade leads on this album like nobody's business, and it's so melodic, and the riffs are creative. Um, it's just such a good album. Like I seriously have been listening to this thing repeatedly throughout the year. It's just such a good album. I love it to death. And for my number one. I actually have two albums because I really can't figure out what I want to do with these two albums. Like, they're both my top spot. I think I I can't. Re they're such a different album. I can't really differentiate the two with a number because I like them both the same, but they're just such different albums that I can't put them in separate spots. Now, number one will be going to first of all, Benighted's Asylum Cave and then Cormorant's Dwellings. Now, Benighted's Asylum Cave is the most ridiculously brutal death metal record that's came out this year, in my opinion. From what I've heard, I've listened to quite a few death metal releases this year because that's probably my favorite genre. This album's ridiculous. Awesome riffing. The drummer is just freaking ridiculous. Um, Their vocalist sounds like an animal, almost, and it's just... The most pummeling, brutal record I could find this year, and I freaking love it. It's great. And Cormorant's Dwellings. This album is actually streaming on their band camp, so I would you know suggest looking at it if you haven't yet. It's kind of like a black metal, progressive, even has some folky elements in it band. And it's something you really have to sit down and listen to, like with you know good headphones and just be focusing completely on the record. It is a masterpiece. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's gorgeous, and at the same time, it hits you like nothing. Like, it's just crazy, ridiculous, fast, um, pummeling, beautiful, everything. Melodic. It's just It just has everything a record needs. And the writing style is so unique. Like, they'll be going into a heavy passage with clean vocals, and then they'll switch to a clean passage with the instrument, with him just wailing his lungs out. It's like really weird. They, they do this thing where like they kind of oppose each other and it's really neat. And at the same time, they also have like acoustic pieces and more folky sounding songs and with the black metal vocals. And it's just a fantastic album, which if you look at its lyrical content, every song has a different story behind it, which is also awesome. The whole album is about death and kind of finding new beginnings and that's why it's called dwellings you don't draw on the past and it's just overall an awesome fantastic record 